Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30-foot, 50-year-old sailing boat, Maroole. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car. We show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. With all our marina chores done, it was time to leave civilization for more wilderness adventures. Since we'd arrived on the east coast of Queensland, Troy had been itching to visit the Swain Reefs, situated 120 nautical miles offshore from mainland Australia. So with conditions favourable for a visit, it was time to untie the lines and head out to sea. The shapes on top of this unusual boat tell mariners that this is a dredge. The safe side to pass is shown by the diamond day shapes. All right, saying goodbye to land. We've got about 120 miles um, to head out and we're going to the Swain Reefs. It's not a big sail, but it's definitely an overnighter. Um, 120 miles offshore, why are we going out there? We're saying goodbye to the Great Barrier Reef. So the Swain Reefs are the southernmost reefs um, of the Great Barrier Reef complex. And going that far offshore, we're pretty much guaranteed to have nice clear water um, and some good diving. But we're on a, you know, a reach. The wind's only about 10 to 12 knots. It's supposed to be quite calm this week and then it's gonna blow like crazy um, at the end of the week. That's all right, we'll be at the reef by then. Should have some cover. Um, yeah, so we're doing about five knots with about 10 to 12 knots of breeze. There's not too many waves at the moment. The swell is quite low, so Marul's <laughs> having a pretty easy time of it, which means we're having a pretty easy time of it. Yes. Macro. Oh, that's a china. Conditions were great when we got to the reef, so we decided to sail into our anchorage. What did you think of sailing into the reef, Pascal? Well, that was very actually. Pretty sedate, wasn't it? Yeah. No noise of the engine. No noise of the engine. Everything's nice and slow. It's good. And now you can just hear the waves. Yeah, there was never any noise, was there? this tuna that we caught yesterday and as you can see it's like really great meat there's just a bit of bloodline there that we don't want to eat because we're going to eat it raw with noodles this morning kawai kawai mm, and a lot of people don't like it but we find it's really delicious but you do have to bleed it really really well and get it into the fridge quickly all right we've made it to sweet lip reef part of the swains and we're going for a dive today 
if you just look at this image, I'll show you where we're going to go. It's um, a bit of a, a bit of a valley in the coral, and it empties the reef flats wherever the waves break. So there'll be a fair bit of current in there, and um, you know, fish fish like all that sort of disturbed water. So we'll go and check that out. If you are looking for a spot for your for your own boat to go and park somewhere and look in, around the coral, features like that are a good place to start. And another good spot to start is having a delicious brunch, which is what. Uh, what Pascal's stuck to sort out right now. Mm. So just putting some black sesame seeds on to finish it off. So what's in this pasky? Um, what's the rundown? Soy bean noodles. Yep. With seasoning like ponzu, soy and sesame oil. Mm -hmm. um, some green, Asian greens, avocado, raw tuna, pickled yep. onions, Poached egg, tomato, and some seaweed. Look at that. And toppings. <laughs> Amazing. It's right. a feast. Well, after this, I'm definitely going to be happy to Ooh. go for a dive. As soon as we looked underwater, we could see that this reef had suffered some damage. There were still reasonable numbers of fish, but a large percentage of them were grazing species like surgeon and parrotfish. Looking closer, we found old crown of thorns starfish scars on the coral. The starfish eat the veneer of living tissue, leaving behind the hard calcium carbonate skeleton. They occur in all depths that coral will grow, but they prefer the fast-growing corals common in the shallows. They are well armoured with poisonous sharp spines that can cause a painful injury to the unwary. They have eyes and tubular feet at the end of each arm they use to explore their environment. While their dorsal surface has hundreds of spines, the underside is lined with hydraulic legs and suction feet. In the centre of the disc is a mouth through which they push their stomach to envelop and digest their chosen coral prey outside of their body. Even out here on the reef with so many hungry mouths, not many fish will consume any part of these starfish. They really are quite formidable. From a creature we're not too fond of to one of our favourites. Octopus are incredibly intelligent, masters of disguise and, as they are delicious to a wide range of animals, they're pretty shy. This one looked quite pleased when we left her alone. With much of the reef affected by the crown of thorn starfish, we decided to move on and explore nearby Sanctuary Reef. We wondered how extensive the crown of thorns infestation had been in this part of the Swain Reefs and we were hoping we'd see some more coral on Sanctuary Reef. As Troy manoeuvred Marul through the coral labyrinth, I kept an eye on things with the drone.
We had a following wind, which meant a lazy Genoa-only sail to the next reef. Proficiency with knots has two parts, learning them and a lot of practice until tying them is second nature. Here we have two very useful ones, the round turn and two half hitches, and the alpine butterfly. Approaching the reef, we decided to start the engine as the wind was too light to safely use for a reef transit in the strong tides of the Swains. Once safely through the reef pass, we set the anchor and went for a dive. It's always a bad sign when you spot a crown of thorns on the bottom, moving in search of live coral to consume. While I'd hoped for better visibility, there were still healthy amounts of bait fish sheltering in shimmering clouds all throughout the shallows. Despite the ravages of starfish, this is still a viable ecosystem. These large boulder corals are often spared of the predations of crown of thorns. Sadly, a lot of the fast grown coral had been heavily affected. Upon reaching the reef flat, the impact was very stark. While it has the potential to grow back of the coral cover lost on the Great Barrier Reef over the years, some researchers say that crown of thorn starfish account for over half of it. Despite their appearance, they aren't a plague released from the bilges of a foreign ship. They occur naturally in the Indo-Pacific region and further afield, but there is a trigger that causes their numbers to explode that's still waiting for a well-supportable explanation. Here we see live coral, the scarring on freshly consumed coral and old dead coral covered in algae. This scarring is a key sign divers use when they are surveying and in the search for these starfish during eradication drives. You can see how quickly these starfish can consume living coral. The usual method of eradication is to inject the starfish with a lethal compound that's harmless to the surrounding creatures and area. It was my first diving job on the Barrier Reef in the early 2000s it looks like a solution is still elusive 18 years later. We swam over the flats to go check out the wave impact zone, usually a good place for coral and fish. The starfish infestation didn't much worry the turtles with their diet of algaes and jellyfish.
When we got there, my fears were confirmed. This reef was in a pretty well advanced stage of infestation and the coral was mostly dead. A few fish were swimming by, but the usual diversity we had seen in other unaffected reefs was quite absent. Compare this to our recent dive on reefs of the Capricorn Bunker Group closer into land. The structure was still there providing cover for fish, but many of the small chromis and particularly butterfly fish were gone. Some corals have defences against crown of thorns starfish and they thrive in the space left behind. Where there is still live coral, we saw much better biodiversity. This clump is home to a large colony of anemone fish. Most anemone fish live quite isolated from others, but these can form vast, overlapping communities. These are another species of anemone an fish living communally and sharing their home with other damselfish, chromis and fusiliers. These natural cycles look very destructive to our eye, but with management of water quality and other human impacts, we believe that even this reef will recover given time. Thanks for watching the video and if you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more like it, hit that subscribe button and a notification will tell you when the next one's coming up. Please don't forget to hit the like button to help recommend our channel to other like-minded people. As always, thank you for watching and see you next week for more winter adventures.